Welcome back. Coronavirus cases spiking around the globe and also here in Israel. The health ministry reporting Monday night 588 new infections throughout the day. This prompting the government to reinstate previous restrictions for the first time in over two months. Effective immediately weddings and bar mitzvahs limited to 250 people. All other events, including communal prayers, will be capped at 50 people from July 9th onwards. Venues will limit guests to half their capacity with a maximum of 100 people per venue. And for more details, we're joined by our correspondent Sarah Williamson, who's on the streets of Tel Aviv there at Rothschild Boulevard. A beautiful day I see over there, Sarah, but not so beautiful perhaps for some of the businesses with these new restrictions being re-implemented. That's right, Alec. Now, apart from these number of social restrictions that are being put in place by the government, which are quite reminiscent of what we originally saw when the when the first restrictions were put in place at the beginning of the pandemic. So there are chances that it might even get slightly worse from here on in. But apart from those social restrictions that you have mentioned, also they included in these restrictions is that 30% of the public sector are also being asked asked to stay indoors and stay at home, work from home rather, as well as students doing university exams. They're also being asked to do their exams online now and any children going into summer camps are now being limited to 28 uh, children per group. Now, also last night after that uh, cabinet meeting uh, con concluded, there was a new announcement from Finance Minister Israel Katz along with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on a financial aid package which was to go to small business, small and large business, medium-sized business owners and people who worked for themselves. Now, that package consists of 58 million US dollars which is to be spread out among these self-employed workers and business owners. If you break it down, the plan, the plan includes special grants for businesses who turn over $5.8 million a year and lost at least 60% of their revenue. They're going to be eligible for $116,000 from the government. Businesses with a turnover of up to $30 million will also receive the same if they lost at least 80% of their revenue. And those who are self-employed and earning up to $87,000 per year will also be eligible for some form of grant, although the government did not specify how much they are willing to be given. Now, I managed to speak to a few business owners here about this, and across the board, many of them were rather disappointed in the government's offer of what they've been given. One, one gentleman in particular mentioned that he thinks that there is just too many fine details that, have make, that need to be met and it is uh, quite impossible for people to be able to receive this grant. Let's take a quick listen to what he had to say. If you start choosing who can get what, you won't get out of it. I think they should have come with a more, like a larger plan that says we, everyone gets something. I mean, not only if you hurt yourself or the business during the coronavirus. Everybody got hurt. Everybody got something wrong with their business and their work. So everybody should get something. Too many terms. And Sarah, that's something that we did uh, here in the past, the difficulty of receiving those compensation payments and the complexity of the bureaucracy behind that. Uh, we hope that everybody will manage uh, to deal with those complexities. Thank you so much, Sarah Williamson, reporting there from Tel Aviv. Now, new polls conducted Sunday in Israel showed that the public approval of Prime Minister Netanyahu and his handling of the coronavirus crisis are on the decline. And with the virus making a massive resurgence in Israel, more trouble could lie ahead for Netanyahu on the political scene. Our senior correspondent Owen Alterman examines the latest trends. Early warning signs for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. After peaking in polls in recent weeks, now the first hints of a drop in support. Some 58% of Israelis say Netanyahu has handled the health aspect of the pandemic well. But that's down from 74% two months ago. On the economic front, only 35% of Israelis say they're satisfied with Netanyahu's performance in the pandemic. Also, a huge drop. 
First of all, we gathered as a cabinet to make unified decisions, and this is important. And also we will compensate those who will be hurt from these decisions. From here, I'm going to a meeting with the finance minister and the financial advisors. Uh, I'm going to deep into the financial issues. The money that was guaranteed will make it to the people and also bring new plans, innovative plans, in order to move our economy forward. These are the things that I think we need to do, both as a government and uh, as a faction. Thank you very much. And if elections were held today, Netanyahu's Likud party would do well, but not as well as it did when it peaked at 41 parliament seats in a different poll a few weeks ago. For that matter, the blue and white party of alternate Prime Minister Benny Gantz continues its slide, down to nine seats, despite Gantz's attempts to be a Prime Minister in waiting. We're set for doubling the number of coronavirus hotels. The Homefront Command is in touch with all the relevant authorities and together we'll beat the coronavirus and together we'll deal with the financial and social consequences of this phenomenon. The new poll numbers are important because they lower the incentives for Netanyahu to head to new elections. Instead, Netanyahu will want to strengthen his position by upping his poll numbers on the pandemic, which will be hard. Positive test numbers have gone way up in Israel, and unemployment is still very high. It's not a good time to be running a country. The global coronavirus toll has reached some grim milestones this week, and over a quarter of the world's cases are now in the United States. International affairs correspondent Batia Leventhal has the latest details. The number no one wanted to reach. 10 million coronavirus infections worldwide, one quarter of them in the United States. That's 2.5 million cases and 125,000 deaths, an all-time high in parts of the country. And the Center for Disease Control and Prevention claims that the number of infected could be 10 times higher than reported, which could mean that as many as 25 million Americans have contracted the virus. The window is closing. We have to act, and people as individuals have to act responsibly. We need to social distance. We need to wear fi- our face coverings if we're in settings where we can't social distance. States also reporting a record number of hospitalizations. Some of America's most populous states stricken. If you do not need to go out and go to work or have to go to the store or engage in some other activity, the best thing that you can do is to just stay at home. I think folks just assumed, hey, maybe this is is gone. It's not gone. Uh, We knew that from the beginning. It's not the way these things work. But even in states that are now former epicenters, fingers are being pointed at the administration's handling of the pandemic. This is a virus. It doesn't respond to politics. Uh, You can't tweet at it. You have to treat it. And we never did that. While the virus continues to surge across many cities and states, An interesting trend this time around. Now the younger population is making up a growing percentage of new cases. And the dreaded second wave seems to have arrived.